Hello. Our story begins inside the council chambers, a couple hours after Anakin Skywalker was told by the Supreme Chancellor that the Jedi needed him more than he knew. Anakin stood in the council chamber silently, waiting the approval of the council to let him in. The Jedi were all greatly surprised by this move made by the Supreme Chancellor. To interject in Jedi affairs was nothing more than a show of power. The Jedi didn't like it either. In the middle of the chambers, Anakin stood, awaiting their approval. His stance was silent, surrounded by the highest minds and the entire order. He needed to become a Jedi Master. If he didn't, he could lose everything. Skywalker's pushed his urgency because he needed to save his wife. He at this point was convinced that she would die in childbirth. He had dreams about her death and he talked to two of his mentors about it. Anakin first went to Yoda who gave him a very structured reaction, something that would allow Anakin to come to peace with the outcome of someone's eventual death. Yoda was the oldest and wisest of all the Jedi. Surely that would click. Surely he would have the answers for Anakin. But for a being who had seen so many deaths in almost a span of 900 years, one becomes complacent, finds acceptance in the life and death of every living being. Yoda was a grand master for centuries. He certainly understood what it was like to lose people, friends, mentors, padawans, students, all of them. He taught classes of younglings that grew old and died before Anakin was even a conception. But the advice given to Skywalker didn't warrant the response he wanted. Anakin was hoping that the nearly 900 year old Jedi would tell him to latch onto those people and never let them go, or give him some old unforeseen force power to save the person he was worried about losing. For Yoda, he simply assumed it was Obi-Wan or Ahsoka, and because they were frontline warriors, it was entirely possible. Ahsoka was on Mandalore with a man who killed a Jedi Master on Naboo, and a number of others since the Clone Wars began. Or Obi-Wan, who could be dispatched any day to another battlefront. Yoda was wrong to assume it was either of them. On the other hand, he didn't get a chance to voice his concerns to Palpatine, because he was busy being rewarded for saving him from the Invisible Hand. Palpatine wanted Skywalker and the High Council to be the ears and voice of the Republic. What a great responsibility. Upon disclosing this information to the High Council, they were genuinely taken aback. They did make the decision. Anakin be allowed on the High Council, despite their feelings towards Palpatine's move. They didn't appreciate it, but they saw it as advantageous. Windu and Yoda had been at discussions over what they should do in regards to the Senate, believing that if they waited till the war was over, they might have to forcibly remove Palpatine from office for being far too corrupt for the Republic. Originally, they were going to dismantle it immediately after the Battle of Coruscant, but another idea was suggested, having Anakin spy on the Chancellor. So, with Palpatine throwing Anakin to their ranks, they accepted him, not as a master. Yoda expressed his unhappiness with Palpatine's actions, and Anakin responded, understanding where the council was coming from. May spoke next, informing Anakin that he was on this council, but he would not be given the rank of master. As Windu said this, he naturally expected Anakin to go back to his seat, gratefully. The council would have done him a high honor. Welcoming him to the council at his age was never done before. Anakin was younger than Mace Windu was when he first joined the Jedi High Council, but Anakin didn't see it this way. Instead of focusing on the positivity of this, he was reluctant in his acceptance of it. The glass was half empty and this was outrageous. Instead of being the youngest member in the Order ever welcomed into the High Council, his thoughts went to how ridiculous it was to be the only member in the history of the Jedi Order to not be a Jedi Master on the High Council. His judgment was clouded by the pressure he put on himself in regards to saving life. Life, something not anyone could just do. Three years before, he told himself that he'd learn to stop people from dying, and with the exact circumstances sitting right in front of him, how could he not fulfill that promise, especially to Padme? With these thoughts at the forefront of his mind, he blurted out a response. He wasn't even prepared for it, but he had to stand his ground, now. He could see the calm demeanor of Windu change into a bitter scowl. Windu sat there in disbelief. Without knowing the full extent to why Anakin was throwing a hissy fit, he thought about why Anakin would be so ungrateful. They were following the mandate of the Jedi Order, something that every Jedi had to go through. Every Jedi Master came to be because they trained a Jedi Padawan to a Jedi Knight. Ahsoka left before she ever accepted it. Sure, it was a technicality, but Anakin had no right. He was given a great privilege and to throw it back into the Council's face was unbelievably immature. Mace let Anakin speak. Skywalker looked at Obi-Wan and his master turned away, ashamed of this out outrageous response. The council members looked at one another, and Yoda gave Windu a look that suggested they needed to put Anakin in his place. When Anakin was finished being outraged that someone could be on the council without being a master, Mace leaned forward. He told Anakin to take a seat. He simply wanted to de-escalate the situation. He wasn't happy with this. He didn't care for Anakin's belligerence towards the council. Anakin steadied himself. He was afraid of what he might do. He looked at Obi-Wan again, who was looking at Yoda and Windu. Mace tried to be nice with Anakin, seriously, but now he was annoyed. The council needed to finish the discussion on dispatching the various council members to star systems around the galaxy. Here we go. Anakin steadied himself and told Windu that he would not take a seat. The members all looked around each other, trying to figure out what Anakin was doing. Anakin spoke up, telling the council that he would not be dismissed like a disobedient child. Windu's scowl only grew. 
Why was Anakin being so ungrateful for such an opportunity? Obi-Wan felt a great sense of disbelief and even disgust in Anakin's demeanor towards everyone. This was a reflection of himself, and he needed to get a grip on his former student. Obi-Wan started to get up, but Windu shot Obi-Wan a look and leaned his hand out towards him in a manner to imply Obi-Wan would not de-escalate the situation. If Anakin wanted to get it all out, then the gloves were off. Let him throw the first punch. Anakin expressed that Palpatine saw his worth. Why didn't they? He was one of the best warriors they had, and he was always providing the council with promise and victory. Anakin believed he should be granted the rank of master. He should have all the accolades of success thrusted upon him. In reality, Anakin was covering up for his desire to enter the restricted section. He told the council that he wanted to know why they didn't trust him. Windu kept his calm demeanor and decided it was time to put Anakin in his place, telling Skywalker that the Chancellor was simply manipulating him for favor inside the Order. Mace didn't stop there, calling Anakin out on his inability to recognize that the Jedi were not warriors. They were fighting the war to end it, and wars did not make one great. If Anakin believed he was worthy of accolades, then he needed to stop acting like a disobedient child. He would never receive anything worthy of respect if he acted like this in front of his troops. Mace asked Anakin if he believed he won those battles because of his intellect and determination, or was it because at his disadvantage he asked a super tactical droid to go easy on him. Windu stood up from his seat and pointed at Anakin's seat and told him to sit down now, and they would discuss his insolence when the session was adjourned. Anakin stepped back a little. He was genuinely intimidated by Windu. He had a demanding presence, and as master of the order, he had to. But when he raised his voice and made sure Anakin knew who was boss, Anakin faltered. Mace waited for Anakin to take his seat, but he didn't. Windu asked what else he had to say. Anakin didn't say a word. He looked through his eyebrows and told Mace that he wasn't going to sit until he had the rank of master. He deserved that much. Anakin raised his voice at Windu. As the council looked on, in disgust and fatigue, with a war engulfing the galaxy, they didn't need another battle here in the council chambers. Anakin told Mace that they lied to him. They forced Ahsoka out of the order, and they never showed him any respect. He was tired of this. He wouldn't stand for it anymore. Behind him, the sound of a lightsaber ignited. This jarred Anakin's concentration. The Jedi Master, Coleman Cash, had enough of this. The stress of the war was enough to put any single member of the council into a comatose state. The pent-up stresses of the war and Anakin's little tantrum were enough to set Coleman off. The council all reacted and turned their attention to Coleman. He rose from his seat with his lightsaber ignited. Anakin put his hand on his belt, unsure of what would ensue. Windu told everyone to stand down. Coleman shouted back. He told Windu that he had enough of Skywalker's insolence. He got away with too much, and he needed to stop being treated like it was acceptable behavior from a Jedi. Coleman didn't move from his position. Yoda sat quietly, his heart shattered. What had become of the Jedi Council? How did they stumble so far? Coleman demanded that Windu reprimand Skywalker correctly. Anakin asked what that was supposed to mean. Another lightsaber ignited. It was Stacey Tin. He stood up and looked at the two Jedi. Windu had enough, and his lightsaber ignited. He told everyone to stand down. There was no reason to be acting as such. Stacey turned towards Windu and suggested that Anakin leave the council chambers until they sort this out. Windu silenced Stacey and told everyone within the council that no one would be leaving these chambers until the session was adjourned. Mace turned to Coleman and told him that he was in the wrong for escalating the situation at this point. He then turned to Anakin as Coleman deignited the lightsaber. Windu told Anakin that he would stay here and not move a muscle. Mace told the rest of the council to leave the room now. They were instructed to wait in the other room until he was done talking to Skywalker alone. Stacey deignited his lightsaber, and Obi-Wan, Agen, Fisto, Coleman, and Stacey walked out of the room. Plo and Kiari Mundi turned off the holograms for a short minute. Windu still held his lightsaber and stepped forward towards Anakin, standing right in front of him. He asked Anakin if he thought this was funny, or if he got a kick out of it. Anakin shook his head, but Windu wasn't buying it. He told Anakin that the council was honored to welcome him, and now they would reconsider if he was even welcome inside of the Order. Mace continued telling Anakin that he was being restricted to the Jedi Temple. He would not be permitted to leave the premises until the war was over. Windu held out his hand and requested that Anakin give him his communication device. Anakin was very hesitant, but the fire in Mace's eyes deterred him from playing games with him. Skywalker handed it over to him, and Mace told Anakin that he would deal with him later, deigniting his lightsaber and dismissing him. Yoda shook his head at Anakin when they locked eyes. As Anakin exited, the council regathered to finish the discussion. When the council returned, Mace dispatched Master Stacey Tin to the planet of Kashyyyk to help Luminar unduly with the defense, as council members left the room. Yoda and Mace took Obi-Wan to the side. They informed him that they were very disappointed with Anakin's behavior, and while they accepted that it was a responsibility that fell on Obi-Wan as an instructor, they didn't want Obi-Wan rushing to Anakin's aid like he did every other time. They simply wanted to deal with this issue themselves. Obi-Wan understood the message and asked what they planned on doing. 
Yoda explained that they weren't going to let Palpatine interact with them. Yoda used the Force to turn on a hologram of the Council session, and he played the part where Anakin said that Palpatine saw his worth. The issue Yoda had with this wasn't that Palpatine told Anakin he had worth, it's that Palpatine was convincing Anakin the Jedi didn't believe he had worth. There was something wrong in the case with Palpatine, and the Jedi had to tread delicately with it. They couldn't allow him to take full control over the Senate or Anakin. Obi-Wan asked if Anakin would be getting an armed guard, and they told him that he was. Syndralic would be informed in the coming hours. Obi-Wan asked if they believed that Anakin should be required to spend time in the archives. The two of them pondered over it. The idea wasn't terrible. Yoda nodded his head. He suggested that he would take Anakin to the archives. It would be best if Yoda could sort this out. Mace suggested that Obi-Wan keep his distance for the time being. Anakin would be left in his room in solitude for a short while before he noticed that there were guards stationed outside of his room. This didn't make him feel much better, but the night rolled around and he prepared to exit so that he could get something to eat. When he walked to the door, he saw Grand Master Yoda, and Yoda asked Anakin to come with him. Anakin told Yoda that he was going to eat, and Yoda suggested they go together. At the same time, Palpatine was at his bubble show across the city, wondering when Anakin might show. Instead of Anakin showing, Mace Windu did. Palpatine was understandably confused, but when he asked, Mace simply told the Chancellor that Anakin was feeling ill, and he requested that he come instead. This twisted Palpatine's plans a little bit, as he did his normal greeting, and Palpatine informed him that scouts discovered General Grievous on Utapal. Windu appreciated the intel, but this set off red flags in his mind about Palpatine. Something was very out of place. What was he planning? How did he get such information? Palpatine asked if he may be as so bold as to suggest that Anakin be the one to lead the Utapau campaign. Windu nodded his head and informed the Chancellor that if Skywalker feels any better, they'd most certainly consider it. He was one of their best. This continued to confuse Palpatine, but he played along as the old politician and continued to watch his show as Windu left. This whole environment was odd. Why would Palpatine bring Anakin to such a bubble show? It was done by a group from Mon Cala, and it was a galaxy known show. There was something going on here, but what could it be? Mace returned to the temple with all the information, all the while Anakin and Yoda were having a discussion. Yoda didn't want to isolate Anakin entirely. He was very displeased with the outrage from early in the day, but at the moment, he decided it would be best to make amends with Anakin until the council made a decision about him remaining in the Order or not. Their largest concern at the moment was winning the war. As long as they did that, they could restore order. Yoda and Anakin's conversation revolved around the loss of life and how Yoda dealt with it, making Yoda maybe a little bit more relatable. Yoda talked about how many people he'd seen come and go, how many friends he lost and he had to let go of. Yoda expressed that in reality it was difficult. It was never easy as a Jedi, and it never was made out to be easy. On the surface, they were steadfast, but when they're alone, they said their goodbyes. That's how they managed it. Yoda told Anakin that he understood Anakin's struggles because when he was Anakin's age, he had them when his master died. In comparison for Yoda, he was closer to 100 years old when his first mentors died, but 100 for his species was kind of close to Anakin's age. Regardless, there was a level of semblance for them to relate to another. They moved from the mess hall to the archives and they continued their conversation. It revolved around things Yoda knew. Without a conversation about Darth Plagueis the Wise, Anakin had no knowledge about the ability to save others from death. Yoda knew of abilities that could do such, but they were locked away. The Jedi eons ago learned how to do it, but believed it was far too powerful to use. If the Jedi believed the Force ruled everything to happen, then they could not simply interject if an individual was going to die. However, Yoda never revealed these as they were secrets of the restricted section. Anakin asked about the Council's decision regarding him, and Yoda didn't want to explain anything that would make Anakin feel at any unease, so he informed him simply that the Council was still undecided. They wanted to restore the Order to peace before they did something like that. Anakin understood but he appreciated the time he spent with Yoda over the previous several hours. After their conversation, Anakin was escorted back to his room and Yoda learned of General Grievous being on Utapau. It would make sense for Kenobi to be sent to fight the droid general, but they didn't want him off of Coruscant for the time being. Yoda and Mace reconsidered their actions regarding Obi-Wan being able to talk to Anakin, especially after Yoda spent time with him. So instead, they woke up Master Kit Fisto and he was sent to Utapau with his Legion of Clones. The following days would mimic the preceding one, just with less conflict within the Jedi Order. With Fisto and Ten off of Coruscant, Anakin was surrounded by Jedi he was closer with such as Yoda and Obi-Wan. However, Anakin was restricted from the council chambers, so for the most part he was just aimlessly wandering around the Jedi Temple, looking for something to do. He was able to alleviate his boredom by training, however when he learned of a briefing, he showed up to it. 
Mace wasn't against him being present. He was trying to provide a united front for everyone present at the meeting. As the conversation built up and continued, eventually Ahsoka was able to speak to them. Anakin was super worried about her, and this was something to alleviate his feelings on the matter. By this point, the Jedi were well aware that Master Fisto had engaged General Grievous. Windu would go to the Republic Executive Building once the session was finished to inform Palpatine of the battle between Fisto and Grievous. He likely wouldn't get much of a response, but maybe he'd get something useful from Palpatine to know of his decisions and plans. The moment Ahsoka came over the communication table, she informed the Jedi that she had captured Maul. When she saw Anakin, she was excited. She hadn't had the time to be excited earlier. However, there was something on her mind. The Jedi all sensed it, and they asked what it was that she would like to say. She looked into the eyes of the numerous council members, who forced her from the Order, and spoke up. She informed them that she was able to capture Maul. However, she didn't stop there. She told the Jedi that Maul mentioned that Maul's former master had a beeline on Skywalker, insisting that Maul was under the belief that Anakin wasn't meant to bring balance to the Force, rather he was meant to destroy it. The Jedi in the room looked at Anakin, and he stood there in silence for a moment, trying to figure out what to respond with, but no words came to mind. Windu looked over at Anakin and then back to Ahsoka while he rubbed his chin. He asked what else Maul said to her during their ordeal. Ahsoka thought for a moment, her arms crossed and her mind playing through all the events. She spoke up again and said that Maul was under the impression that they were all going to die. Ahsoka chalked it up to Maul losing his mind, but he was genuinely afraid of something. She also insisted that Maul orchestrated the Siege of Mandalore in an effort to bring Anakin there to kill him. Mace ordered Ahsoka to bring Maul back to the temple as quickly as possible. He turned to Anakin and the temple guards with him, suggesting that they lock down the temple. Yoda looked over at Mace and started for the exit. Anakin asked what they were doing. Windu turned his head towards Anakin and told them they were protecting the Republic. If what Ahsoka told them was true, then they needed to act quickly, if the order was to survive. Syndralic was called over his communicator and he was immediately told to shut the temple down. Anakin rushed forward, telling them that he wanted to help. Windu, Kenobi, Kolar, and Yoda exited the communication room. Mace turned his head and stopped. Obi-Wan looked at Windu and then to Anakin, as he told his former student that he needed to stay here. His feelings on the matter were too out of place. They would return, but for now, he needed to stay safe. Anakin reluctantly nodded his head, as one of the temple guards came up to Anakin and grabbed his elbow, requesting that he follow him. The temple guards were instructed by Syndralic to take Anakin to the lower levels of the temple. Down there, they would be surrounded by artifacts of the Jedi Order. Some of them were healing stones, others were simply powerful light side objects. The hope was to ensure nothing dark could get the grapple on the Chosen One. After locking down the temple, Syndralic would come down to the area where Anakin was placed and talk with him. Across the city, four Jedi Masters arrived at the Republic Executive Building, and they entered the office of the Chancellor. Yoda took point on this mission to ensure they succeeded in their plans. Palpatine was very caught off guard when he turned around to see these four Masters, but he played the game with them and said. Yoda requested that Palpatine relinquish his powers to the Senate. The war was over, and it was time to move on. Palpatine asked what this was all about. He hadn't had time to remove his hard drive from the security recordings, so everything said here would be kept. He had to choose his words delicately. Yoda told Palpatine that his emergency powers were far too great for the Republic, and it was time to let peace usher in with a state leader rather than an autocrat. Palpatine told them that he was by no means a ruler with absolute power. Yoda shook his head, suggesting that everything was laid out as so. With General Grievous defeated on Utapau, it would be time for the rule of Chancellor to come to an end. Palpatine could fight his way out of this, or could he escape? The choices were tempting. He wouldn't surrender his power. Palpatine turned his head towards the window behind him, and before he could move for it, he turned back and told the Master Jedi that they made a terrible mistake for threatening him. Mace informed them that they weren't threatening him, but the Senate would decide his fate. Palpatine shot back a hissing answer, telling the Jedi that he was the Senate. Yoda was the first to ignite his lightsaber. He could see it, the same presence he saw in a vision months before. The other Jedi followed in unison, and Yoda told them to defend themselves, each of them moving for their lightsabers into a defensive position. By the time they were ready, two crimson blades shot out, and Sidious was in their faces, gunning for Kenobi, who was able to muster up enough strength to defend himself. Agon, on the other hand, was one of the best duelists the Order had, and he made an offensive push. Windu and Yoda jumped into battle as well. They were four masters, but Sidious was an unstoppable force. He moved like a whirlwind throwing both of his blades around at remarkable speeds. Each Jedi struggled to keep pace with him. His offensive pushed Windu into the corridor between offices. Yoda tried to keep pace with him, but it proved no avail. Sidious was able to get Yoda away from him. As he did, he shot lightning into Agon's face, throwing him from his feet. Yoda leapt up, and Sidious parried with remarkable pacing. Windu moved in and so did Kenobi, each of them taking their turns at their respective strikes against the other. Sidious knew he had Agon out of the fight. The Jedi Master was nearly blinded. All he had to do was dispose of Obi-Wan and Yoda. Sidious spun his lightsabers around and slashed at the three Jedi. 
He connected, swiping through Obi-Wan's forearm and blasting him at the forest. Obi-Wan slammed into the wall in deep pain. Across the city, Anakin could, could feel the tension and he rose from his feet. Syndralic tried to keep Anakin in a meditative state, but that was no longer working. Anakin demanded to be let out of the room, but Syndralic informed him that he wouldn't be doing it. Anakin was beginning to get impatient. He didn't want to be locked up anymore, and so he ignited his lightsaber. All the temple guards in the room did the same. Anakin told Syndralic he didn't want to hurt him, but he needed to go and help. Syndralic ignited his own blade and told Anakin to stand down. Skywalker held his blade and bit his lip. Should he listen? Should he not? What should he do? Anakin was unsteady, listening through the force. It was Palpatine requesting help. Anakin was jittery, but he deignited his weapon and nodded his head, apologizing for trying to start something. When the temple guards deignited their lightsabers, Anakin shot the force outwards, throwing them all from their feet and rushing for the door. Syndralic was a brilliant Jedi master. Using an old technique, he spun Anakin around into a headlock and pressed his fingers against Anakin's temple and slowly put him to sleep. One would assume the headlock would put Anakin to sleep, but in reality it was just to keep him grounded. Yoda and Sidious fought with each other until Yoda was thrown from his feet into a wall, crashing through it. Sidious made quick work, but Windu wasn't going to let Sidious just win. Their blades glided across the air, snapping and crackling into each other. Windu had to work extra quick with two blades working against him, but he was able to best Mother Talzin not so long beforehand, and so he would do the same to Palpatine, swinging himself under Palpatine. It was a twisted dance, and with two swift strikes, Palpatine was gutted on the floor. Windu locked the door and gathered his allies to make sure they were alright. They were. Moments later, a communication came in from Master Fisto. They hadn't just secured Grievous' death, but they captured the entire Separatist Council. Instead of doing a slow approach, the Jedi attacked quickly, and they got to the Separatists before they could escape to Mustafar. Inside the Jedi Temple, Anakin woke up in the same room. He was confused. What happened? He looked around, and it was silent. He turned his head and saw Obi-Wan. His arm had a prosthetic on it. Anakin was so worried, he asked what had happened, and Obi-Wan explained that Syndralic had to put him to sleep because he was acting out. He continued saying that the Jedi defeated the Sith, and the Council had momentarily seized control of the Senate because of Palpatine's colluding with the Separatists. The Senate was appalled of both Palpatine and the Jedi, but because of the Jedi's control over the situation, there was little the Senate could do to rebuttal their effort to thwart the corruption. As was explained by Obi-Wan, the Council took full control, and they still had control. But in the midst of chaos, Grievous was destroyed and the Separatists were captured. The only thing is, the Council decided that Anakin would no longer be welcomed inside of their order. This genuinely did hurt Anakin, especially since he could no longer exit on his own terms. He no longer had his lightsaber and his Jedi robes were removed. So Obi-Wan told Anakin that he was sorry, but if he wanted to ride somewhere, he would like to accompany him. Obi-Wan would take Anakin to Padme's residence. Anakin nodded his head and requested that Obi-Wan take him to Padme's residence. So Obi-Wan obliged. They left the temple and made their way for Padme's residence, where she was already raiding, wondering where he'd been. But she was happy to know he was okay. Obi-Wan left them, so they could have their private time. He knew. He wasn't stupid, but now he didn't have to pretend. When Anakin turned to say goodbye, didn't say thank you to Obi-Wan, his former master put his hand up and simply told Anakin to enjoy the life he deserves. Anakin smiled and Obi-Wan left for the temple. The coming weeks would be full of stress. With the Jedi takeover, the galaxy would anxiously wait to see what happened. Padme wouldn't have much of an issue with this takeover, and she would take care of herself during this time period. She knew that unnecessary stress could be a bit too much for her or the pregnancy, and so she avoided the possibility of stressing herself out. Anakin did as much as he could for her to make the process easier for her. By the time the Jedi occupation was over, Luke and Leia would be born. Anakin, after Palpatine died, stopped having nightmares of her death. And while he was anxious, he wanted to ensure he matched her calm demeanor, so he didn't. Anakin also didn't want to stress her out, so he made sure that he didn't freak himself out. Luke and Leia would be kept on Coruscant with Anakin when Padme returned back to the Senate. While the Jedi takeover had people super on edge, they were very relieved when the war ended and the Jedi gave the Republic back over to the Senate. Padme would continue to serve for another two years in the Senate until she believed she was no longer necessary to the Republic. In those two years, Ahsoka and Obi-Wan would be able to enjoy Anakin at his happiest and eventually get the chance to spend time with the married couple. The two year period was also incredibly important for their relationship. During the Clone Wars, they exhibited traits of a toxic relationship, and over the two years of actually living together without secrecy ruining the development of the relationship, they were able to build a chemistry of two people actually in love with each other. When the two years were done, they picked up and moved to Naboo on Padme's family's estate, where they were able to enjoy time with the in-laws as well as time in the lake, just like when Padme was a kid. It was like the story she told Anakin when they first came here to Naboo. The two of them would have one more kid in their time, and it would be Luke and Leia's younger sister, Zena. Their life would remain happy, and as Anakin continued his development in the Force, he would pass on what he learned to his children. Maul, on the other hand, would be locked away within the Jedi Temple. When Yoda died, Anakin was invited to be at the funeral. 
With Grandmaster Plo, the Jedi Order would change course and fixate itself on this new state and era without the Sith and with receding darkness. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our story. Again, special thanks to all of our patrons, Gallivan Gaming, Tristan, Darth Revan, Jack Miller, Pimp Daddy Bane, Flynn Vessis, The Last Jedi, Apollo, Jedi Sloth, Mad Manny Studios, Anakin 003, Lemon Knight, Rex the Wolf, The Man with Three First Names, Dark Saint 46, and Lord Deadwing for supporting the channel. If you want to support the channel in other ways, go check out the Patreon. Otherwise, let's talk about our story. So, I wanted to take this story a little bit differently. I know other people have done it before, and I haven't seen their versions of it, so I'm fairly confident this is different. I didn't want Anakin to be the hero of the story. I also, want, I also wanted to approach the story that might actually be a hot take within the community, and that's that Anakin was kind of wrong. Like, I know that, like, like, don't get me wrong, like, what he wanted was, was obviously uh, normal and a human, but the way he approached it was wrong, and I think I think people give him too much of a pass for how he acts inside the temple. Um, I rewatched the scene with Windu several times, and like I really like like Windu doesn't want it. Like he doesn't want that to happen, and you can see it in his face. He's very much so like, why are you doing this? Like like he's just like he's like you know you're on this council, but you're not granted the rank of master. That's a high honor. I think everyone in the council would agree with that. I think most people without watching would agree with that. That it's a high honor to be on the high council. But the way Anakin reacts is he's responding to a half-empty glass, and I wanted to make sure that was apparent, and I wanted to cover that. But I also wanted to make it feel like the Jedi were just tired of it. Like, I wanted I wanted the tension to be there for a fight to ensue. But I don't think a fight would ensue. I think if there, I think if Coleman were to make a move, Windu would rightly defend Anakin, but at the moment, I think he was annoyed that anyone and everyone was acting that way. I think the Jedi would also remove Anakin from any possibility of just getting involved with anybody, and I think Anakin would be reluctant, but I believe he would just kind of deal with it. I don't believe he would go out of his way to try and make a big fuss out of it. I think he would just be like, alright, well I guess I can't go anywhere. You know, he's not going to challenge the entire might of the council, and I think we have to be reasonable with who Anakin is in this story. So I hope you enjoyed a different take on it. Um, it might not have been action packed for Anakin, but as I say, he's not the chosen one in every video. I just can't do the same thing where he's the ex machina of every video, so that just kind of gets repetitive after a while. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed. I love you all, spread the love, and always Remember, my friends, may the force be with you.